Hi and welcome to a Photoshop tutorial on adjustment layers. Adjustment layers are a great little feature to be able to allow you to modify an image without damaging the original. So I'm just going to jump straight in here and go to adjustment layers. Now there are a multitude of adjustment layers that allow you to modify different things. So for example, the levels. Just accept OK on here. It allows me to adjust the levels of brightness and darkness within the image depending on the inputs. So if I want to push it all the way this, I can wash out the image so it becomes almost a washed out daylight tropical island or I can push the shadows to make it blur into darkness. Now that's the input side of things which you can see here and I can actually control which channel. So if I want to suck out, push out the reds and then remove the blues, I can wash out the image quite effectively in that direction. And there's a lot of others that you can do as well. Then there is also the output level. So I can take this and I can modify, oops, not the red channel, but everything. I can actually make the image lighter or darker. Now these adjustment layers are kind of useful because if I wanted to make just the water dark, then I could apply a mask. The mask is automatically applied, but it allows me to change that. So if I grab just a black brush and Make sure I paint in black, and you'll see it appear down the bottom here. So just colour that in very quickly and haphazardly. And then if I go back to this one, I can then say I want that to be darker. You can see the effect I've had already with my haphazard painting. So that part of the image is masked out. So if I go back to this and say, well, okay, we'll change it and actually make it lighter, it makes the top of the image brighter and the bottom darker, which can be used to great effect. So that's one example which I'll turn off so I then can keep working on the original image. So the next one. Commonly there are a few that you, you find yourself going back to regularly and depending on, on the kind of work you do, you'll find what you're looking for. The curves, hue saturation are the ones that I use and there are others as well. So looking at the curves, I like this new layer and goes to the curves layer. This allows me to change the spectrum of highlights and shadows. So here you can see the histogram of where all the color information exists. So I can make certain parts of this information pop up to create dramatically weird effects. Or I can blend it so that other bits disappear and it depends on how you adjust this curve. You can always tap the auto button and it will work out stuff for you to give Photoshop's best estimate. Again you can apply masks as you would with any other adjustment layer. <coughs> and you can also affect individual color channel channels and you'll get interesting effects as a result. So I'll hide this one and move back to my original and add yet another layer mask. So here I've got hue saturation. Hue saturation is three sliders. You have hue, which is the color hue. So I can push this into weird spectral things. Uh, usually I find, if I'm going for something weird, I'll push it way out of sync. Usually it's adjustment one or two shifts either direction, just to enhance the colors that you're thinking about. Then of course saturation. So you can go for a highly saturated image with super rich colors. Um, I would say about here. When I'm testing any particular of these sliders, I'll always slide to both ends to see what effect it has and then bring it to some, back to something sane. So if I want a washed out image that's like an old photograph that's aged a little, then I might pick something like this one to really desaturate the image to suck that color out of it. Or I might push it to make it a very rich color spectrum and to sort of highlight reality and that sort of stuff. Um, and then of course you've got lightness, the final of the shifters. Uh, and you can see from a bright, completely black to completely white, and you can make it nighttime, daytime, and that sort of stuff. And it's usually you'll, you'll find yourself adjusting things one or two shifts either way. Every time you see one of these little boxes, you can actually type in a number. Um, so I can actually reset everything to zero. And the other thing that I haven't mentioned yet is this box, two, two lines in the bottom. As I shift the hue, it shows me what colors swap to what colors and flicking back and forth is kind of fun. So there's those three. Um, then of course you've got 
what others. The colour balance, which go OK and I'll turn off that one, is the mix of red to cyan. So you can push colours in each particular way. Um, so bring up the greens or push towards magentas and have a slightly ready orange sunset. So probably not too far. Um, and then you can look at the shadows. So if I want to push the shadows into the the blues and the greens and the cyans, and then have the midtones in there and the highlights in super red and magenta and yellow, I end up with this odd effect. Thankfully, I can delete it. Delete layer. Goodbye. Now these things can be combined to create an enhanced photograph. Now you can see that the smudge marks from my layer mask here, so I'll just try and even that out. And then if I wanted to adjust the curves on that layer mask, I can really quickly smudge brush the whole lot. And here, you can see I'm shifting and adjusting the image so that the result is that three different parts of the image, and because I, I can't see what I'm drawing on here on the screen, I'm using over here as a reference. So I want to erase that little blob I did over here somewhere. That one. Did I get it? Yes, mostly. Oh, I've sized the brush in that area. Done. So now I can go back to these adjustments and double click. So I can push the hue of the entire scene out of whack. I can look at the curves and adjust the curves of everything. And then I can look at these levels and shift those, shift those around. And the end result might be something like this because I'm desiring a particular effect. So I'm going back to here. I'll get the eraser. Just tidy up the edges of that. And here you can see, yes, it's not real to life photography but it does have a unique effect. And this might be the goal of the image you're creating. So here I have applied three adjustment layers. I've changed things of a very simple image to enhance particular effects. And I've used layer masks to really push certain areas in certain directions. And it may be the case that um, you want to do something a lot subtler with less of the dramatic effect. But to, as a practice task, I would grab one image, a creative commons image from somewhere, and I'd apply some layer masks to it and see what effects you can get. Because the only way you're going to learn this stuff is through experimentation. Thank you and bye.